Welcome to Cologne. It's the Eurovision Club Germany's annual convention 2013. We're in the Gloria Theatre and it's just about to start with a sound check of today's show. And now next to us is a young gentleman that has been at the Eurovision stage in 2013. He is native to his own country. He made it to the final of the Eurovision Song Contest this year. It is Ryan Dolan next to us from Ireland. Hello, welcome to Cologne. Hello, thanks very much. It's great to be here. It's sort of keep on meeting on quite a number of occasions. Yeah, this like yeah. the Eurovision concert, then of course Malmö, yeah. Stockholm. That's right, yeah. No, and good to see you now in Cologne. <laughs> How do you like Cologne actually? Yeah, I love it at the moment. Um, everybody's really friendly. As I was just actually put up on Twitter there that like, no, everybody's been so friendly since I got here. And I mm. um, haven't got a chance to get out and visit the city yet, but I'm looking forward to it tomorrow. So you're going to be staying a bit, a bit longer here and, and yeah, see... Yeah, well I'm going home tomorrow night, the flight's at 10.30, so um, all day tomorrow to, to get around the city, so it's going to be good. How fit are you? How, How fit are you? Fit? Ah, oh, yeah, I'm pretty fit, yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> I know a very good exercise for you to, to run up the cathedral. Really? 500 and I think 9 steps to really? go up there, no lift. <laughs> I must try that. But you have a very good view onto uh, the Cologne surroundings. Right, cool. So no, we're you're definitely going to go there tomorrow and have a look at the cathedral. Cathedral. That's fantastic. Go inside as well. You will really enjoy that. Yeah. Um, have you been here before though? That's my first time. Um, mm -hmm. First time in Germany um, at all. So um, no, I'm really excited to get over here. And um, no, it's really good. Let's start off with your career before the Eurovision Song Contest. When, yeah. did, you, when did you find out that you want to become a singer? Um, I suppose it was really late on. Um, I was probably around... I will have been singing maybe since I've been 16. Uh, just in the house, I never did anything, any gigs or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I just like singing in the karaoke of the house. And um, I think it was around when I was 21, done a few uh, karaoke competitions and they went really well. And everybody encouraged me to um, record an album of covers. So I done that and that went really well. And um, so then I just started writing music then. You, you also write music? Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, well, so I wrote the, me and my friend wrote Only Love Survives, so um, we're, we're working on a lot of stuff at the moment, too. Like, so, no, um, amazing, I'll, that's really amazing. I, I didn't know that you actually write music yourself. Yeah. That'd be fun to talk about more about this. Uh, about who and what inspired you to become a singer? Um, to be honest, I, I don't really, I've always liked certain artists, um, like Michael Jackson and Queen was mm -hmm. always music I would listen to. Um, but I think I just liked singing because I enjoyed, no, I enjoyed it and um, my family, there's a lot of my family would sing as well so my family's really musical and I sort of grew up around it so I think that's the main reason that I started singing. Did you al al always wanted to become a singer or was it something like I want to become a film star or um, was it your ambition to become a singer? No, well I was actually, when I um, was in school I was training to be a pilot um, so Back in the back in the school days, that that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to become a pilot, and um, I was training for that for a few years, and I, I enjoyed it, but I didn't think I wanted it to be my job. Mm -hmm. um, so I suppose I didn't really realize what I wanted to be until um, I just started singing and getting out there, and you know, realized how much I enjoyed performing. So now, if you didn't, were not a singer, what would you actually be? Would you be a pilot or something, somebody else? Something um, else? I don't know. I don't think I'd be a pilot anyway. God knows what I would have <laughs> ended up doing. <laughs> now, in 2013, you entered the national selection to the Eurovision Song Contest in Ireland. Yes. What made you go for that? Um, well, at the time, I was touring around Ireland doing um, gigs along with Jedward. Mm -hmm. And um, I was actually their choreographer, was one of the, chosen to be one of the mentors mm -hmm. for the 2013 selection. Um, so he approached my manager um, because he seen me performing along with the two boys and um, just asked that, we, that I write my own music and that I have any songs. So we just put forward on Love Survives and he loved it. So that's how it all came about. Amazing, that's really fantastic. Uh, but did you expect them to win the contest in Ireland? Uh, no, not at all. I was going into it, just hoping to do my best. Mm -hmm. um, so I never expected to do anything, I just you know, try my best and everything went well in the night and the public in Ireland really got behind me. Uh, so it was good that they got behind me. So, so the karaoke uh, singing at home before Eurovision was actually quite helpful for, for you to, to <laughs> yeah. set the, set the, the theme, scene for, for uh, you to become a musician. Yeah, I suppose yeah. so. Yeah. I think that's the case with a lot of singers. Everybody starts off mm. on the karaoke even though they mightn't admit it all the time, it's something that everybody does. 
and um, it's I suppose doing small little gigs and karaoke in front of people mm -hmm. it helps you build up your confidence. Um, so no, I'd say it would. Yeah. Amazing. Now we talked about this before in, in Sweden. Uh, it's about your voice, which is qu quite quite high. You're singing it quite high. Yeah. When you talk, it's not so high. Yeah. But did you have any vocal training for that? Um, no. When I started singing, um, and I just it was a, it was a natural thing. Um, never done any training uh, at all, even in school and music and the whole like mm -hmm. Um The only tr vocal training I did was after I got past the national finals, and I started seeing vocal coaches and just to um, suppose work on my techniques and things like that. So. And, and it's very helpful because now yeah, you're a, a, a huge star out of yeah. that. Do you think that your vision, the participation of your in your vision, has helped you with your career outside of Ireland? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, like. I've, Gained a lot of fans from all around the world, mm -hmm. um, not even just in Europe, in Australia, in America, um, because actually the Eurovision is quite big over in Australia as well. So um, oh, it's really helped me a lot, and it's a great platform for me now because when I'm releasing my own music, um, mm -hmm. I've got that audience you know, waiting to see what I'm going to release. So yeah. it's really helped me. Well, you had, you had uh, an album on release after Eurovision. Yeah. Frequency, Frequency think, uh, yeah. which I have, and it's a fantastic oh, album. Congratulations you. on that one. Thank you. How did that do for you? Um, yeah, it's doing really well. Um, I'm still working on the album. I was just a, we wanted to release a few songs off the album before the Eurovision, mm -hmm. um, so we still have to do the final re release of it yet. So I'm still working on that, different songs, mm -hmm. and um, so hopefully we're going to be releasing some new singles in January, the end of January. So. Amazing. You mentioned before that you did a cover version album. Yeah. Is that available to the public? Um, no, it's not actually. Um, it was kind of. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It was. It turned out well, but it was not something that I wanted going out there. You know, I mean, it's just mm. cover songs, and it was way back when I was just starting to sing. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's done well for me, and it's really got me known around my local area and around Ireland. So. Um, no, but it's not available to anyone. Yeah, mind. okay. <laughs> uh, then, of course, you went to the Eurovision Song Contest in, in Malmö. And, and uh, how for you? How, how was it for you to be on that stage? How did you experience the whole uh, two weeks there? The, actually, it was the best experience of my life being over there. It was great. The, the whole atmosphere around the Eurovision was amazing. Um, everybody that works within the Eurovision is just the loveliest people that you could ever meet. And I made a lot of friends over there. And um, just being on the stage was just surreal to be on such mm -hmm. a massive stage in front of all those people. Um, so it was just amazing. Like it was definitely was the best experience of my life. Any anecdotes you can share with us? Any special story you you've seen coming across the, those two weeks? Um, special stories. Um, what like? It's something either very very funny or, or something you didn't like at all. Uh, like me interviewing you. <laughs> <laughs> Everything went really well. There's, there's nothing that uh, I didn't like. I enjoyed everything. And there was lots of funny stories, but I can't remember anything. Just within the whole team, like we had a, we had a blast over there. Like so it was great. Well, you will meet Natalie to, today. Natalia Kelly from Austria. You yeah. see her again. But are you in touch with any of the other Eurovision performers from from your semi final um, or from the final? I've been chatting to a few of them. Um, just off and on, I've met. Um, a few of them going to different gigs. Um, like Roberto met him a few times. He's been at different gigs that I've mm -hmm. been at. And um, is it Christy uh, from Finland? Is it? Was Krista? Krista, 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 Krista. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've met her a few times as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've been chatting a few of them on Twitter and things like that. You know. So. And did she ask her, ask you to marry her? <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't. No. <laughs> Um, so, are you still in touch with the dancers you had in, on your on your number? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've actually, one of the dancers is twenty first birthdays tomorrow or tonight. Okay. So I'm gonna miss that. We've been over here, like, so we're gonna get, uh, we're all gonna get a big party when we go back and um, do something before Christmas and meet up again. You know, so. You've been on the Eurovision stage. Would you do it again? I would actually do it again. Um, as I say, it was a great experience, and um, you never know what would happen in a few years. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Have you, over the history of Eurovision, found out your favourite Eurovision entry? Um, my favourite... Mm, there been so many, I think. One of my favourites would have been um, Euphoria. And um, I like, I always say I like the, the Irish entry, the rock and roll kids. Mm -hmm. um, so it was always one of my favourites as well, growing up. Um, but I'd say Euphoria is probably my favourite. <laughs> Ireland has a huge history in Eurovision with having won it seven times, yeah. of course, and uh, have you been able to meet the saint? 
Do you know who the saint is? Uh, just Johnny Logan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I met Johnny a few times. Um, I actually met him for the first time, maybe a few months before I'd done the national final. Mm -hmm. And at, at that stage, I didn't even know what I was going to be doing in the national final. It was just a coincidence. And then I met him again then. Um, I don't know, so I, met him. I met him a few times, I can't remember. <laughs> but uh, no, Johnny's great, he's good crack. Now, Eurovision this year, you met uh, artists from, I think, 37 countries or 38 countries. I, I can't remember how many countries were there. Uh, is there anybody in the, uh, these countries you would like to sing together with? Um, that's what I've never really thought about it. Um, Just came to my mind, that's why. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, there's, a, like, there's a lot of really talented people that was in the competition this year. Like. Mm. Um, so, I don't know, you never know. Now you 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 sing upbeat only love survives is an upbeat song and of course we know that there's a ballad ballads in Eurovision. Are you singing also ballads? Yeah, well I'm actually working on a new song. Hopefully it's going to be a new single for January, mm -hmm. and that's a, a ballad. Um, so I'm looking forward to releasing that. It's song different, like my albums, really upbeat songs. Mm -hmm. But actually before the Eurovision, I was actually singing quite a lot of ballads. I was doing a lot of Bruno Mars and Adele, and I'm going to be performing a few of those tracks um, tonight. Amazing. Uh, um, mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to getting into the ball thing. Yeah, definitely. That's amazing. Uh, how can people get in touch with you if they want, would like to, to buy the album, for instance? Or, or uh... Yeah, well, the album's available on iTunes, mm -hmm. and it's available in all the download stores. And um, people can get in touch with me on my Twitter page, it's uh, Randall Music, and my Facebook page is Randall Music as well. And uh, do you also plan to release your album on a normal CD? Is that still possible? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, well, hopefully. Um, it just, just depends on the way things work out um, with uh, distribution and things like that. But I would like to get the album out on CD definitely. Because I know a lot of people doesn't buy their music off mm. iTunes, so hopefully I will. Okay, and uh, let's, let's have a look. Uh, is there any time for any hobbies for, for you? You do some sports or keeping uh, fit? Or? Um, yeah, I go to the gym a lot. Um, that's probably my main hobby, but in the summertime I like to do jet skiing and oh. water sports and things like that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's for me and things. I love water sports. Yeah. You, you are a full-time musician or you have another another job? I'm a full-time musician, yeah, at the moment. Mm -hmm. So, um, I've had other jobs before coming up to this, but um, I've had to lay them aside. Mm -hmm. and just, I want to concentrate on the music, so it's my priority at the moment. Do you find it easy to make money with being a musician these days? Um, it's... Well, I suppose before the Eurovision, it probably would have been difficult because you're constantly trying to do gigs or even doing no free gigs mm -hmm. just to get out there and get your name out there and you have to do that. Um, but I suppose after the Eurovision, things have been a lot better, but um, you still have to work hard at it, like and nothing comes easy. Mm -hmm. Hi, and thank you very much. All the best of luck thank for you. your, your upcoming projects, for your album that, that's going out beyond on the market. And where are you going to be on, on tour around uh, Europe, maybe? Yeah, uh, hopefully once we get the album out, we're going to be doing a lot of touring around Europe, so uh, I'm really excited about that. And uh, where people, can people find out about the tour? So you, you yeah, that, the yeah tour? as I say, you find out everything on Twitter and Facebook, okay. and um, my website is uh, ryandolanofficial.com. Ryandolanofficial.com. Yeah, dot com. Dot com. Yeah. Hi, and thank you very much. Have thank fun you. tonight, and uh, I'll see you again. Thanks very much. Nice to see you.